AJ. Yeah, yeah. What's up? It, it, it's clear, right? Very clear. All right. So let me share my screen so we could start. Okay. All right. Could you see my screen? Yep. Okay. So um, let's just let me go over the intro. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another section with JFX. I got Nick on the line over here. And we will be doing a review on the previous trade which I took on your USD and also um, how to target external lows when trading within a range. And um, when you pick a, a weak low, how you should know that low is a weak low and then you're trading off a strong high, okay? So basically, this was a trade from last week. And um, when you're talking about structure, let me go, let me go to the lower time frame. Let's say a 30 minute structure because this was kind of like the structure which I was trading from. And um, this is like the trades. I was in an entry from here. And then my stop loss was just over here. And then I was also in an entry from this guy. Um, have him over what I get as this external low. Sorry, internal low. All right, so a lot of people might be asking, why is this an internal low? Having it be a swing low, you know, seeing the structure moving like this. So, you know, this has got to be a swing low. You're correct, it's a swing low, but then Going over to the four minute forward time frame, you would see that um, this is actually an, an internal low of this range. Okay, so we have a bearish structure, but then price cleared out the external low of this, and then we're ex expecting a return into premium of this range. So this guy got a break of structure from here, which created this range. Okay, so this is like an internal low of this particular range. And one thing you should know about swing highs and lows, once that structure has been broken, each swing high or swing low is gonna be used as liquidity. Um, each swing high and swing low within that particular range. Now you see this, you see this right here, we had this range, right? We had a break of structure from here and then price went back up to its premium, heading back down and doing the same thing. So once the overall external low was cleared out, which was over here, what did you see? Price went back up to clear this high, which is also a swing high. But you see, this is now liquidity and price gave a retracement once that swing high was cleared out into discount. So you see, this is a swing low, but also the internal low of this. So would be used as liquidity once price has broken structure from here and then retracing back down. So yes, if you're asking if there's any possibility that you will use this going back up from here, yeah, it's possible. We could see something like this because, you know, this could be this new structure of the bullish range trying to clear out this internal high of this particular range. But who knows? We could see price going back down because this is also a weak low. Now, when I say weak low, let me give a little explanation about that. You know, when I say weak low, I mean, when you have a structure like this, just like how we have over here, once price is bearish, and you know, it creeps clearing out the external low, you know, having a new swing high and then going back up into premium to create a new swing high and then, you know, heading back down to clear the external low. Once price is doing something like that, you should understand one thing that this low, which is against the trend, is a weak low, right? The low against the trend is always a weak low. And secondly, how to confirm this, if the low fails to clear the swing high, which created its, you know, um, the swing high, which created this low, if this low fails to clear that high, is also going to be a swing low. So if you have a change of character from a lower time frame, and when I mean a lower time frame, if this is a four hour time frame structure, um, a one minute change of character from a one hour, sorry, change of character from this is also a lower time frame. So if you do have a, a one hour lower time frame structure, which is shifted into the bearish side, it, that also confirms that this low is also weak low because now you know that price, um, this low has failed to clear out this high. And then it's also a weak low because the momentum which was coming from this low wasn't strong enough to clear out this high. So this would become your confidence. And then you know, price would always retrace, you know, creating internal structure within this range. But how would those internal structure be created? That's when you know that the swing lows within this range would be grabbed as liquidity. Same thing price is doing over here. Why price head for the overall target, which is this swing low, which was what price did over here. As you can see, every single time a low was grabbed, Price we chased back a little bit, you know, you see? So once the overall swing low was cleared, what happened? Price went back up, all right? 
So now, having this, you also understand that why this went back up to clear this swing high was because this range was now broken. So, you know, price has cleared out the external low, and now we'll be heading back to clear the internal swing like highs within the range, which created the low. As you can see, this was the low, this was the high, and this was the new swing low, which was created. So this guy cleared out liquidity. I went back up to clear out the internal structure within this range, which was also like price testing the premium of see, this. Jay, see with that as well. See with the see how you're using the fib is um, there as well. Like say if you go from the actual last move up and drag it across. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fib, the fib as well. Um, so see, look, that's actually so go down, 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 down. I, no, no, no. See, see how that is what you're using is fifty percent anyway. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so you, you see that last move up. No, so go left, 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 left. This. Uh, yeah, so see, I left one more time. What the low of the next left? Low, down, down, left, left. Where the fifth, where the fifty percent is on the left hand side, the last low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, right, right, right. One more time, and then drag, draw that up from the bottom to the top. That's the order flow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So that that's where that's where price is gonna come back. No, no, no. If you could just use the the same uh, fib tool you got, the red and the grey. You could Again. annotate. You know that, right? <laughs> oh no, oh, that makes sense. I always forget that. Sorry, okay. that, that would have made a lot more sense. I'm so sorry. Like so, see, like from there to there. Yeah. Right, if you use the same tool and drag that across. That's where price has to come back into to continue order flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's also another confidence when understanding the range you're in. Because looking at this, you know that um this is like you know the overall structure of the forward time frame, right? So you know yep. this guy also went back up, you know, once the swing low was cleared out on the previous structure, and then they created liquidity over here. This was the high which cleared out this liquidity. So you have to understand that your POI would be within this because this guy would be like a supply zone, which price is going back to test, you know. And then we have also the internal low over here, which was also inducing the supply, which the, the, you know, like the manipulation which get at all these highs. That was what Nick was trying to tell you guys. And it's also a very, very important complex also to use when trying to pick a supply zone or a POI within your range. Okay. So now, yeah, back to what I was trying to say. Once um, the internal structure has been cleared out, which is like the swing structures of this range, what do you see? You see, price went back up, cleared at this swing high, and this one, no, did not officially clear this one, tested this one because this was also inducing this guy. And on the, the next video when I'm going to be talking about inducements, I would speak more about this. But for this structure, we're talking about structure and um, how to understand weak lows within the range, okay? So you see, this were also swing highs, which were also strong highs before price, you know, cleared that this and a high. Once that was cleared out, what do you see? You see price went back into the range to clear the internal highs, which were, previously swing highs because traders were also stacking up orders from here. All right, so once this external low has been cleared out, the intentions of the trend has been completed. So the institutions would also um, put together, you know, money to move against the trend as well, once price was also moving into premium, and then to clear out the inducements, mitigating the POI, which is within the order flow like Nick um, listed previously. So now, Having this in mind, you understand where the um, swing lows are and you know where the internal structure are as well. If you intend to study more about that, you could check out our Telegram channel, which we share daily updates. And we do mark out swing highs and swing lows time to time on the weekly basis. So let me go back to how I took the trade, understanding this, and we could study that together. Okay, so once I saw the change of character from this point, I knew, you know, price was going to be retracing once the swing lows within this range has been cleared out. All right, so this was my internal structure target. And then I knew this guy was like a structure, you know, which cleared out liquidity from here. Even if it's a swing, it's a weak low. We do know it's a weak low, but then we know we have a supply zone and then we have a little imbalance within this. So price was still- See, see with the low as well, which I, I use now, which really helps me. It's like, see how you've taken the low by a wick. See, see, like, yeah, yeah, this guy, up. right? If that, see, if that closes as a wick, but it doesn't take the bottom, then you know there's a good chance that you're going to reverse. Exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
So that's how you also know, like, you know, a stop hunt and stuff like that. You know, when you see price doing something like this, you know, this is like at the bottom of the low. You know, this is a, this is a weak low, yeah? But it also has the formation of a stop hunt and then, you know, a break of structure. And then we have an inducement over here, which, you know, it's more like this. You know, price gives us liquidity and then give a break of structure. So, you know, these points, which cause the manipulation is also going to be a high complex POI. So you could see something like this. But now this, this is something you should also note. If this is a weak low, all right, and price is mitigating the POI from this, don't expect much movement from that because it's just going to respect that for a little while. You know, having it being, you know, based on the structure, I might just head up to clear liquidity, mitigating within the trend and then going back down. So if you know you're trading from a swing low and you're picking a POI, yeah, you're doing the right thing, but you might get stopped out because, yeah, it's a, it's a weak low, okay? It's a weak low and then price could literally clear this out because this is like the overall target of the higher time frame trend. Okay, so this is one mistake that a lot of people do that also leads them losing a lot of money because they don't know they're trading from a weak low and then price is going to be heading to clear at that particular low. So this back to what I was saying is also a POI, but then this inducement was too far from this, which we know this guy wasn't inducing this because it's like a four hour time frame. Who keeps an inducement 50 pips away from the POI? You know, that doesn't work like that. So, you know, this inducement was actually inducing the breaker block, which we had over here. Okay, so the breaker would have been your POI, and then you could go to the lower time frame to see if you have anything within the imbalance zone, which price could be acting from. So when I went to the when I went to the two hour time frame, I saw this hidden base, you know, the hidden base. So I refined back down to the hidden base, and then the hidden base was my POI, which was being induced by this guy. And you could see price reacted from that, but I did not trade anymore because, you know, based on my discipline rules, I was already done for the day. And, you know, I was ready to move back up. So that was what I did. And then I was done for that day, having this been my overall, you know, trend. And then when I, now I'm going to give a breakdown how I took this POI, you know, having explained what um, swing lows and weak lows are. If you don't understand that, you could go back to the video, you know, pause the video, take a little wake up, you know, take some notes from that, and then also practice yourself and see what you could find, all right? And if you're also looking for our Telegram link channels, they are all going to be listed in the description, and then you could tap that and then head to join us on Telegram, okay? So now I'm going back to the 15-minute time frame. We are explaining how I took the entries of these guys. So let me give first what I did. Once I knew more about our trend, I saw price was headed back down, right? So first of all, we have a break of structure from here. Now on my Telegram, as I've been speaking over and over again about um, flip zones, and as you can see, this gave a really good reactions. Um, each on the one minute time frame, we would have gotten an entry on the flip zone. And I'm also going to be doing a video about flip zones within the month. Okay, so I will, I will post something about that and also to help you um, recover your losses once you lose a trade. And as you can see, this low was also broken because of one reason. It was a weak low. You know, this failed to grab any swing high, you know, which would have been a change of character, but then this did not. And as you can see, each swing lows within the range gave a reaction once they were cleared out. You see? So you know this would, would be used as liquidity once there's a change of character from here. So there was no need to mark out any supply within these lows because you know these are going to be liquidity. So if you keep doing this, you just know you're going to get stop hunted over and over again once by and price will just keep heading for the overall direction, which was like the lower time frame, the higher time frame, external low. Okay. So now going back to what we're doing on this side, which is knowing how I took my entry. When I saw this structure, we had another break of structure over here, right? So we have price clearing at this liquidity, which was this swing high. So what I did was this. This is an obvious soda block. I do not trade from obvious soda block because I do know those are uh, traps. So now what happens? Price goes at this obvious soda block. And then we had um, a supply zone over here, which on the one minute time frame, we had a very clean bearish order flow coming from this point. Okay, so following this order flow, we had like um, a stacked up range, which was leading back down to breaking the structure. So we could have a retest of this range and price could head back down after that. So what I did was that I observed this. This was an obvious other block, yes, but also would be used as um, a breakup block. But then you should know one thing, it's not guaranteed that a breakup block is going to break a structure because the mitigation of a breakup block is also an inducement to the POI above. So you can see, yes, this can be a POI um, inducement because 
is just 20 pips away from that. Sorry, I think 18 to 16 pips away from that. So you, you can see this could be induced in this. It's not 50 pips, it's not 100 pips away from it. So it's also can be used as our POY inducement while we have this imbalance along the way. So what I did was that I paid attention to this, but I did not take my first entry immediately for me to get there that. When I went to the one minute time frame, I saw the change in character from here, which was this candle. So my entry was from this guy with my stop loss genuinely above this high. Because you know we're not sure if price is still going to be mitigating. This is just like a full POI, but price could still head up back up to mitigate just this you know, body, which was like another block, right? So what I did was I did my put my stop loss above this, which was like um 15 pips above or 12 pips above. And then, you know, I, I hold when price took out the external low, I took some patterns off and then, you know, I watched the structure and see if we could do get a bit of structure, then I will close my overall, you know, entry points and then, you know, so you see that bit there, Joe? You just doing a risk entry, or are you doing a confirmation entry? Yeah, I'm always doing a confirmation entry. I'm always doing a confirmation you... entry. Either I'm using momentum on the one minute time frame, or I'm actually waiting for the five minute time frame. But I'm always on confirmation entry. I do not take um, mitigation entries, which is like you know, price moving into my POI only if I'm on a five minute on it or a one minute setup. All right, if it's on a five minute or a one minute setup, I do take risky entries. You know. Because I know price can mitigate yeah. that and just head back down. But if it's only 15 minutes, 30 minutes or above, I always go down to lower time frame because we always have lower time frames within those range. So paying attention to this, I know there's also another flow within this range, which I could observe once that has been broken, then I could take my entry. You know, just to be safe, just to be safe. I know we do have the break of structure here, but that would be a good confirmation for you to have a peace of mind, you know, trading peacefully, knowing that price. It's just, you know, day the change of character on the lower time frame. So I always do a confirmation entry from the five minutes or the one minute chart. So now when I paid attention to that, I saw price was just accumulating. And then I saw this change of character. But when I went on the on the one hour time frame, I noticed something. I noticed that price. Sorry. I noticed that price was just clearing out this inducement into this supply zone, right? So now we do have, you see that little imbalance we have within this to this, you know? So this guy on the lower time frame would be like an inducement for this above. So I had this POIs and uh, I did put my stop loss on break even. So, you know, just to be safe in case I'm wrong. And then I watched the structure to see if I had more confirmations. So my first confirmation was like the white cup, you know, using this as a um, selling climax. APS, AR, like an XT. But this was like my UA. Although overall, I was looking at this like an accumulation, you know, price could be going back up. But then we had the CPI news, which was coming up like um that same day. So, you know, it's, it's going to be bearish for it's going to be bullish for usd you know because that's like a usd news most of the time 90 percent is always bullish for usd so i still had um some you know balls to think that this was going to be um like a redistribution so what i did was that if this was a ua it could also be a ut right so yep. this could be like um the ut and this could be like the utad so what i did was you know because this guy did clear out you know the AR and still gave a retracement. So this could like be the UT and this could be the UTAD. So do we see any sign of weakness? Is there any sign of weakness? And then I paid attention to this. You know, this week coming back down, this was not supposed to happen because, you know, we had this inducement and then something within this structure would have been mitigated because this cleared out the high, you know? So this giving a stop point of a strong low was like, you know, a, a sign of weakness and which would have been a good confirmation as well minor sign of weakness if you could say because you know the body never closed below the week so this was never a break of structure on this time frame so it was just like a minor sign of weakness because this was also a strong low all right so what i did was this i paid attention we also we also have liquidity being stacked up over here which means this could be a valid supply zone for price or reactor you get what i'm trying to say right so yeah. and we also have this imbalance from here so Price could also react from this guy. 
for me, I, I would have, like, with the way that it was built, and I would have thought it was going up. I wouldn't have taken a sell, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I actually, I did not know why I thought this was going up. But looking at this, what I did, I had two options. You know, what I did was I sent an accumulation to the Telegram channel. And then I also told them that I was in a cell. Let me see if I could share that screen. And I was like, okay. I was like, um, yep. Yeah. So you can see we do have so many charts. We share them time to time. So this was like, um, yeah, this was the accumulation which I sent. So this was like the accumulation which I sent. So let me view that. Okay, so this was the accumulation which I sent to the guys. You can see, perfect, right? So I was like, price was going to be reacting from this. This is the work of I see a possible, I see the possibility on USD, but I'm not sure on the last point of supply due to you know not having a visible liquidity being built yet, you know. But waiting for the POI also on the lower time frame to see if I get a confirmation from that. Then when also below that I also sent a chart which was like um. Eating of the sale, though, in case you know this turned out to be a redistribution, my LSL is also adjustable, you know, from my observation. So, which was the sale which I was in from this point, and I was expecting price to also give, you know, like um, is there also a possibility for, you know, a redistribution? So I took a sale from here, having the lower time frame structure confirmation, which was what I did on the five minute chart over there, and I was like waiting for price to see, you know, we were like five minutes away from the news, you know. And I do not trade a new period, but if I'm on a position, I always break even because you know it could be really, really well, you know. So what I did was that I broke even from here, having the five minute confirmation. Let me see if I could bring that out. Yep, this was exactly where I took myself from because when I observed from here on the one minute chart, this was like a clean bullish order flow which moved into the POI and gave a change of character from here. So this was like a change of character and I had this like my swing internal highs. Like you see, I call that swing because every single thing I do on the higher time frame is also what I do on the lower time frame. So this was like the swing highs within this range once price, you know, took out the low, which created it after clearing out an external high. So this was like, you know, a weak high, which failed to clear out any swing low, just moved into, you know, discount of this previous range. So this was still bullish. But on the lower time frame, which was on the one minute, we already had the change of factor, and this was a, like a good entry. So I was on two positions from there, which was like from here and here, and then my target was like this, and I had my target same as the two-hour structure, because I knew there was a possibility that price could be heading to clear out that external internal those as well. And then CPI news came out, and price gave a perfect reaction from my POI, which was just you know, straight to TP. So this is like a breakdown of the USD section and um, a little insight on how to use external and strong lows. So if you, strong and weak lows, sorry, if you find this useful, do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and also check our Telegram channel if you like daily setup from us in the description below. And um, we would also get more sauce like this from time to time, okay? So thank you all for joining us today. And um, Nick, do you have anything to say before we end the section? Oh, it was good, man. The first trade was good. The second trade is insane. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, like, I have, I've, uh, I've definitely learned something on the second one because I would have totally been looking for a bullish move off a of wipe off there. <laughs> That's good, man. Thanks, Jay. All right, bro. All right, thank you all for joining us today. Have a nice day. Take care, man. Bye-bye. Yeah, bye-bye. Oh, you're still there. <laughs> <laughs>